In this video, we will show you how to perform a basic Dirac Live calibration. During the calibration, the Dirac Live tool has control over the ISP. Therefore, in order to prevent interfering with other Storm Audio processors on the network, the ISP and theater or zone you wish to calibrate will have to be put into Dirac mode. Begin by accessing the main speaker's landing page of the web user interface. Select the theater or zone you would like to calibrate and click Edit. Locate the Dirac and Setup button above the current profile. If the system has multi-way or active speakers, click on Setup. Ensure that each way or driver of each speaker are grouped together, so that Dirac Live does not treat them as separate speakers. Click Close to return to the main speakers page. Now click on Dirac. A dialog window will appear instructing which parameters of the current profile will be taken into account. Dirac Live will always account for manual parametric EQs as well as level and polarity adjustments in the current profile, in order to keep speaker manufacturers' profiles intact. Delays will be set to zero as they will be determined by the Dirac Live tool. Storm Audio recommends that you do not adjust levels or delays prior to Dirac Live. The only case where these should be modified beforehand is if you have multi-way speakers that require a driver level offset per the manufacturer's specification. Dirac Live will ignore all base management settings and treat all speakers as subwoofers as full range speakers during the measurement process. This verifies how the speakers and subwoofers behave globally and allows for better base management response. Once finished, Dirac Live will export a new profile, leaving the current one unadjusted. Click Start New Calibration when you are ready. On your computer, open the latest version of the Dirac Live tool. If you need to update Dirac, please visit www.live.dirac.com forward slash download. Dirac Live frequently releases new versions, so checking before starting a calibration is a good idea. At the time of this video, the latest version is version 3.0.14. When Dirac Live loads, you should see the current version as well as your login information. If you are not logged in, please click on the menu button in the top left and log in. This allows Dirac to autosave the project file to your hard drive so that if the Dirac Live tool crashes, you can easily recover the project. The processor should be visible as Storm Audio ISB host in the center of the screen. If it is not, you can also access it by directly entering its IP address in the top left here. Click on the Storm Audio ISP to proceed. All of the audio inputs connected to your computer will be shown here. Select the UMic 1. We will now need to import the calibration file for the microphone. If you have purchased a microphone mini kit from Storm Audio, or have a UMic 1 but do not have the microphone calibration file, visit www.minidsp.com forward slash products forward slash acoustic hyphen measurement forward slash UMic hyphen 1 and enter the seven digit serial number printed on the sticker at the base of the microphone. You will want to download both the regular and 90 degree calibration file. Save these files in a location where they're easily accessible. Now return to the Dirac Live tool and click where it says no microphone calibration and select load from file. A browser window will now appear. Use it to locate the calibration files for your microphone. For a two channel calibration, we would use the regular calibration file. However, whenever a system incorporates surround channels, we will use the 90 degree calibration file. Now we will see a visual graphic of the calibration file and its name displayed. We may now proceed to the volume calibration. Volume calibration is crucial to a good calibration. The microphone will begin in the sweet spot or primary listening position, which is normally the center or near the center of the listening area, and will then move all around the listening area, causing the microphone to become quite close and quite far away from certain speakers in the room. This means the volume needs to be low enough for when the microphone is close to avoid a clipping error, but high enough for when the microphone is far away to avoid a low signal to noise ratio error. Begin by ensuring the microphone gain is set to 100%. This is the full input level of the U-Mic 1. Note that if you adjust the level above 100%, the value will change to plus dB. This means digital gain is being added to the microphone, which is undesirable. You will also notice a floating meter to the right of the microphone gain adjustment. This is measuring current input and is a good way to check the ambient background noise level of a room. 
In general practice, a good signal-to-noise ratio is achieved when the gain reaches approximately 30 dB above the noise level. Therefore, if the ambient background noise level of a room is between minus 48 to minus 50 dB, we will aim to calibrate each speaker to approximately minus 18 to minus 19 dB. Now adjust the master output to a good starting level. By default, the Dirac Live tool will limit you to minus 25 dB unless you override the protection level by clicking on the red lock icon. Until the timer runs out, you will be able to adjust the level above minus 25 dB if needed. To avoid both speaker and ear damage, never begin by measuring a speaker with no attenuation. Instead, set each speaker level to approximately minus 10 dB. Now that the speaker levels are attenuated, begin by calibrating the left, center, and right front speakers, as they are typically the farthest from the listening area and may require adjusting the master output level. Now calibrate the rest of the surround speakers and subwoofers. It is important to note that the current volume calibration information is stored to each microphone measurement position. Therefore, if during the calibration process you find yourself in a microphone position where you cannot escape a clipping or low signal to noise ratio error, you can return to the volume calibration page and readjust the speakers without losing all of your previous work. The new volume calibration parameters will be saved to the following microphone positions while not affecting the previous ones. When satisfied, click on Proceed to Arrangement. The arrangement selections provide three different options with corresponding graphics and number of measurement positions. Tightly focused imaging with nine measurement positions, focused imaging with 13 measurement positions, and wide imaging with 17 measurement positions. It is very important to note that there is no difference in how the Dirac Live tool treats your measurements between tightly focused imaging, focused imaging, and wide imaging. The only difference between these three options is the number of microphone positions you plan to use. For most calibrations, we will use nine measurement positions. Please note that you may encounter rooms with complex acoustic interferences where a different arrangement may better suit your needs. We will use the nine measurement positions, so select tightly focused imaging and click on proceed to measure. The graphic representation of the microphone survey has varied greatly since Dirac Live 1. The new graphic has been chosen to simplify the process to the end user so that more people can be comfortable with their first calibrations. While this graphic is suitable for a beginning calibrator, this is not the microphone survey we will use, nor what Storm Audio recommends. This is a rendering of a basic 9 measurement position microphone survey for a 5 seat couch. Before the volume calibration, you were instructed to place the microphone in the sweet spot or primary listening position. This is highlighted on this graphic by the light blue position, position 1. The following eight positions are the dark blue positions. This is intended to be used as a guideline, and your room may require you to modify these positions to fit your needs, so here are the guidelines to follow if you need to adjust a position. 1. Always set your microphone positions with relation to the listening area. No position should be in a corner where no one will be listening. Two. No position should be within 8 to 10 inches of another if possible, or within 3 inches of an armrest or backrest, even if calibrating for a single seat. 3. Avoid measurement positions falling on the same X, Y, or Z axis positions as the other measurement positions. This will give the Dirac Live tool a more comprehensive view of the listening area. Take the first measurement by clicking Measure Selected Position. You will see a graphic display of the frequency response for each speaker and subwoofer. It is good practice to verify the first measurement since it is the one used for calculating levels and delays. Click on Proceed to filter design. The Dirac Live tool will warn us that we are proceeding with one measurement. This is fine as we aren't actually proceeding. Here is the frequency response analyzed by Dirac Live for each speaker. As you can see, Dirac has already broken them into groups based on channel and response. Since we are not currently interested in the correction target, uncheck the box to display the target curve. This is useful as a verification if you know your speaker's expected frequency response. You can also see if there are any large variations that you do not expect. If you are unfamiliar with the effects of room acoustics, you may not fully understand what you are looking at. 
If everything appears OK, then return to the measurements page. The order in which you take the remaining measurements does not matter to Dirac Live. For simplicity, Storm Audio recommends moving in a pattern as the one we have laid out numerically so that you minimize the time moving the microphone stand back and forth. Proceed with the remaining eight measurements, following the microphone measurement survey as closely as possible. If you must, you can always select a measurement position and erase the data for that position to re-measure, even the first position. When all nine measurement positions are complete, click on Proceed to Filter Design. We have three predefined curves that we used for cinema. One for the main LCR channels, one for the surround channels, and one for the subwoofer channels. These are available from Storm Audio through the client portal and are recommendations based on the experiments and studies done by Floyd Toole, Sean Olive, and others. Once again, these are recommendations and may not be appropriate for every system. Always keep in mind the limitations of your loudspeakers and subwoofers. Start with group one and two and load the LCR cinema target for the left and right and center channel groups, or just the left and right channel group if you are using a phantom center. Next, proceed to the groups containing surround channels and load the surround cinema target for those channel groups. Finish by loading the subwoofer cinema target to the subwoofer channel group. In the upper right corner are the base management options. Off provides the regular Dirac Live design with per speaker group targets and standard filter calculations with no base management. Upmix provides regular base management filters with standard Dirac Live design and calculation, including each subwoofer being scaled by the number of active subwoofers to match the target curve. Full bass optimization will harmonize the subwoofers and non-subwoofer speakers in the lower frequencies, using tailored phase filters, delays, and level adjustments. Our results with full bass optimization have been quite successful and we will use it here. Select full bass optimization. After the filter design reloads, you will see a vertical crossover bar with individual crossover points for each channel group and the subwoofers will now be integrated into each group's frequency response. You can adjust the location of the crossover and the target curve if needed. In some cases, lowering the crossover from Dirac's recommendation by 5 to 15 Hz can greatly smoothen out the transition between the speaker group and the subwoofer. However, pay close attention to the frequency response as well as the low frequency and high frequency limits of your loudspeakers and subwoofers and never exceed them to avoid damage. When you are happy with the target response of each group, click on Calculate. The Dirac Live tool will now calculate all of the filters needed to correct your system. Once complete, select the Proceed to Filter export. Dirac Live will always show one slot, as it will create one new profile from the data you have acquired. Each theater or zone in the ISP can have multiple profiles. Give the calibration a name and description that is meaningful and click Export. When the Dirac Live tool is done exporting the profile, it will return to the filter design page. Now return to your web browser showing the processor's web user interface. The web UI will ask you to give a seating label to the profile and confirm the name and description. Click Save. The calibration will now be visible as a profile. Base management will say Dirac and the crossovers will be unaccessible. Click on Delay, Level, Limiter, and Polarity to view the Dirac Live calculated coefficients for both level and delay. You will also note at the top of level, there has been a global gain added to the profile. In coherence with psychoacoustics, the human ear and brain has a tendency to decide that louder equals better. Dirac Live will never boost the level of a channel, but will cut all channels to normalize them. Therefore, in a direct comparison, the calibrated profile may be 3 to 6 dB quieter than the raw system. The gain added to the profile will allow you to accurately compare your calibration with the raw system, and you may need to increase or decrease the level to make it appropriate. It is now time to audition the system. We should use a combination of known music and cinematic content to verify the system's performance. Often you will find the desire for small fine-tuning adjustments such as level and in some cases even delay. You can of course adjust the target curve and measurement positions in Dirac Live if you like. 
However, Storm Audio has a built-in trick to make this a simple adjustment for the installer. On the profile bar, select Duplicate. A new profile will be created with all of your Dirac Live calibration data, but now with further editable delay and level parameters, which will be added on top of the Dirac Live calculated coefficients. In some cases, the left front and right front delays will be slightly off. Depending on the layout of your room, you may find that making the delays equal will restore any skewing of the soundstage reproduction. This is done by adding the difference of the delays to the less delayed channel in the manual delay. It will then sum with the Dirac delay to match the other channel. Rename the profile to something meaningful as in version X ADJ for adjusted. Once you are satisfied with your calibration, click Save on the profile and then Save on the theater or zone to return to the main speaker's landing page. Lastly, we need to allocate the calibrated profile to the preset used for the theater. Click on the preset's landing page of the web user interface. Select the desired preset containing the theater or zone you just calibrated and pick the new profile from the profile dropdown. You are now ready to enjoy your calibration results. Please keep in mind that while this is a great application that is capable of many things, it is still software trying to understand and tailor the response of the room to the human ear, and the end results may not be perfect. This concludes this video tutorial. Please visit us on our client portal at stormaudio.com for more information and on YouTube for more videos like these.